Hello and welcome back and everybody. Today I got another deck tech here for you. This is one of my viewer submitted deck techs that he would like me to build for him. So I thought I'd give my spin on it and see what I could come up with. So let's get into it. We've got Edgain, Larcenous, Lutinus. It's one, a blue and a red for a 3-3 human bard. It says each non-land card in your hand without foretell has foretell. Its foretell cost is equal to its mana cost reduced by two. Also says whenever you cast your second spell each turn, go target creature and opponent controls. So I pretty much completely ignored the second ability with goad. I don't really like goad. It's not really one of my favorite mechanics. I think it's kind of annoying to deal with. So I pretty much just skipped that and went solely into the foretell card theme. So obviously the first thing we're going to be needing to do, put our spells into exile and then cast them from exile and get benefits off of that. So first up, I've got wild magic sorcerer. It's three in a red for a four, three orc shaman. It says the first spell you cast from exile each turn has cascade. It's pretty good value. You know, every time you cast one of your spells from foretell, you're going to be getting an extra card off of it. Not too much to say there, just a good value piece. Next one we got is the lost and the damned. It's one blue and a red for an enchantment. It says whenever a land ETVs under your control from anywhere other than your hand, or you cast a spell from anywhere other than your hand, create a 3-3 three, three red spawn creature token. So every time, again, that we cast something from Fortel, we get a 3-3 three, three from it. It's great value. You know, we can have some blockers up while we try to get some of our other strats off. Next up, we got Cosmos Charger, three and a blue. It's a 3-3 three, three horse spirit. It has flash and flying and says foretelling cards from your hand cost one less and can be done on any player's turn. Also has foretell two and a blue. So this is nice because we're going to want to hold up our mana to hopefully interact with some of our opponent's spells so it's nice to be able to hold our mana up if we don't need to cast any spells we can foretell cards on our opponent on our rights end step that way we're not losing out on value another theme i'm going with in the deck here is the hellbent theme having no cards in hand and getting value off of that so we're going to start with a new card here we got file of galadriel it's three mana for a legendary artifact it says if you would draw a card while you have no cards in hand draw two cards instead if you would gain life while you have five or less life you gain twice that much life instead and it has tap add one to mana of any color so baseline, this is a three mana mana rock that adds one mana of any color, which is pretty nice. However, we're going to try to get our hand as empty as possible by foretelling everything. That way we get some benefits off of them. And one of those cards is going to give us a benefit. Avaricious Dragon, two red red for a four four dragon with flying at the beginning of your draw step, draw an additional card. At the beginning of your end step, discard your hand. You're going to have to have some setup before you play a card like this. You can't just throw it out and expect to get value off of this. You have to set up beforehand, make sure most of your hands in foretell and then slap this down and get some more value off of it. Another great card here we got is Gary per Orrery. It's four mana for an artifact. Each player may play an additional land on each of his or her turns at the beginning of each player's upkeep. If that player has no cards in hand, that player draws three cards. So yes, this is going to help our opponents, but I think we're obviously going to be taking way more advantage of it because our hand's going to be empty most of the time. Also, since our commander doesn't let us foretell lands, this is a way to get those lands out of our hands so we can get maximum value out of Avaricious Dragon and similar effects. Another one we got here is Imrith, Desert Doom, three blue blue for a five five legendary dragon with flying it says Imrith Desert Doom has ward four as long as it's untapped and whenever Imrith deals combat damage to a player draw a card then if you have fewer than three cards in your hand draw cards equal to the difference so this essentially connects it can draw us up to three cards and pretty much our main win con here is going to be through our, our burn spells such as passionate archaeologists it's one in a red for a legendary enchantment background it says commander creatures you own have whenever you cast a spell from exile this creature deals damage equal to that spell's mana value to target opponent so this is kind of a stall strategy you know put our cards in exile, throw out cards like Cash and Archaeologist, and will our opponents down that way, get their life totals as low as we can, slow down the game as much as we can, and hopefully we can win that way. So similar to Passion and Archaeologist, we've got Keeper of Secrets. It's five and a red for a 6-4 demon with first strike and haste. Also says whenever you cast a spell from anywhere other than your hand, Keeper of Secrets deals damage equal to that spell's mana value to target opponent. Pretty much the same effect as Passion and Archaeologist. It's very strong. Next up, we got Isolation Cell. It's four mana for an artifact. Whenever an opponent casts a creature spell, that player loses two life unless they pay two. So this can really slow down some of our opponent's creatures decks, or if they don't want to pay the two mana, they obviously lose the two life, which just helps our deck get to its win con a little bit faster. And since this is a little bit more of a janky theme, I thought I'd throw in just one combo here. It's a two card combo, but it is kind of hard to pull off. It's Heartless Hit Itsugu and Soulfin Mayhem Dominus. So Heartless Hit Itsugu says three red red for three. Ogre Shaman has tap. Heartless Hit Itsugu deals damage to each player equal to half that player's life total rounded down. And so Solfim Mayhem Dominus is two red red for a 5-4 Phyrexian Horror. It says if a source you control would deal non-combat damage to an opponent or a permanent an opponent controls, it deals double that damage to that player or permanent instead. Also, you can pay some mana and discard some cards to make it indestructible. So basically, you're going to have to have your Heartless Hit Tsugu out, either give it haste or you can wait till the next turn, throw out your Solfim, tap the Heartless Hit Tsugu, and in theory, it should kill all your opponents. I'm not relying on this as a win con in the deck, like I said, but these cards are good on their own without having the combo. So if you don't want to play the 
the combo, you don't really have to. And another good way we're going to slow the game down is with cards like Silent Arbiter. It's four mana for a 1-5 construct. It says no more than one creature can attack each combat and no more than one creature can block each combat. Again, against those aggro decks, this is going to really slow down the game. We also got a few value pieces here. We got Felden of the Third Paths, one red, red for a 2-3 human artificer. Two in a red, tap, create a token that's a copy of target creature card in your graveyard, except it's an artifact and it to its other types. It gains haste, sack that at the beginning of the next end step. So with cards like Avaricious Dragon that could possibly discard some of our cards in hand, it is nice to at least have one option to get some of those cards out of the graveyard. And now I'll go over a few of the ramp pieces that are notable to the deck. First up, we got Vol, Candle Keep Researcher, three in a blue for a 2-3 human wizard. With Vigilance, it says tap, add an amount of colorless equal to Vol, Candle keep researchers toughness this mana can't be spent to cast spells from your hand so this is good in two ways obviously the first one being you can spend that mana to foretell cards you can also spend that mana to cast cards from foretell so it's doubly good in this deck one that's not as good but it is still very strong in the deck we've got thran turbine one mana artifact during your upkeep you may add up to two colorless mana to your mana pool this mana cannot be spent to play spells so unlike vol you can't actually use this mana to cast spells from foretell but you can use it to get a basically a free foretell each turn Another great card, Sage of the Beyond, 5 blue blue, 5-5 five, five spirit giant with flying. Spells you cast from anywhere other than your hand cost two less to cast. It also has foretell itself for four and a blue. So with your commander reducing your cards by two, also this reducing them by two, if you have a four and a red, say your Mizzix replica rider or something that goes into foretell, you cast it from foretell, you're spending one red on that. It's very strong. The amount of mana that you can kind of cheat with this deck seems pretty good. Another great card when it comes to mana generations can be Runaway Steamkin. What a red for a 1-1 one, one elemental. It says whenever you cast a red spell, if Runaway Steamkin has fewer than three plus one plus one counters on it, put a plus one plus one counter on it, and then you can remove three of them to add three red mana. So it's nice to have a few cards in the deck that will generate us mana as we're going. Not in a storm way, but it is nice to be able to get some extra mana to either use it on foretelling, casting things from foretell, stuff like that. It's a very mana intensive deck, so it is nice to have some cards like this. And another option you can go with is Suspend. We got Soul of Talisman here. It's an artifact. It says suspend three for one mana and has tap add two colorless mana so if you don't know how suspend works you put this into exile for one mana at the beginning of your upkeep you remove one of the three time counters on it once they're all gone it comes into play so it's nice to have cards with suspend on them because if you want to use again your avaricious dragon and you want to have the most value from it that you can getting cards out of your hand with suspend is just another cheap and easy way to get your hand down to zero and last but not least we got a couple removal spells here first up delayed blast fireball one red red for an instant Blade Blast Fireball deals 2 damage to each opponent and each creature they control. If the spell was cast from exile, it deals 5 damage to each opponent and each creature they control instead. Also, foretell for Red Red. So first of all, it's just flavorful. It's nice to play cards that fit the theme of the deck, which is foretell. Also, it only hits your opponents, which is really nice. I just like this card in general. And the other removal spell I'm going to be talking about here is Enchanter's Bane. It's 1 and a red for an enchantment. It says at the beginning of your end step, target enchantment deals damage equal to its converted mana cost to its controller unless that player sacrifices it. So obviously, if you're the only person with enchantments left in play you can obviously just pick enchanter's bane not pay it and then sacrifice it so you don't have to deal with it but it is nice to be able to one either get rid of your opponent's enchantments in is it which is not very easy to do or it also goes into our burn theme with doing damage to our opponents so that's pretty much the deck you know if you want to pick one of the avenues that i went with and focus more into that you can do that i went onto the edh rec page and i saw it was instant sorcery themed which is my least favorite card type so i figured i'd try and do something a little bit different I don't know how good this deck is really going to be. You can go ahead and check it out for yourself if you'd like. I got the deck list down in the description. Feel free to give that a click. If you'd like to see a deck from me in my perspective that I can build for you and make a video about it, go ahead and let me know down in the comments below. And if you want to see some more videos from me, go ahead and subscribe. I'm going to be putting out more content. This is my favorite game after all, so I just want to share my love for the game with the community. So thanks so much for watching, everybody. I'll see you guys next time. All right, take care.